Hey y'all, Austin here with Our World Media. Welcome back to another book review, guys. But it's not just any book review. No, it is a fellowship review slash read with Kevin over at Kevin Toll Reads. Um, I will tag his channel down below. Um, you know, I just want to start off by thanking Kevin for agreeing to do this with me. You know, I enjoyed my fellowship read with Jay over at Faceless Book Review so much that I wanted to do one with Kevin. I'm not going to lie, it was a little daunting because Kevin does read quite a bit more than I do. Um, you know, again, thank you, Kevin, uh, for agreeing to do this. Now I need to get one planned with Hide and Read as well as Dustin um, at some point. But let's get into it, guys. You know, what, what did we fellowship read? Well, we decided we're going to do a Louis L'Amour book. Uh, Kevin's been getting into Louis L'Amour here more and more lately, which has made me super excited just to see somebody, you know, pick up a Louis L'Amour book and enjoy them as much as I do, if not more than I do, um, which I'm not sure how often that happens because I really enjoy Louis L'Amour books. I'm not sure how someone could enjoy them more than me, but when I was talking with Kevin regarding it, he goes, hey, you... You talked about reading this one. Do you, do you want to do that next month? And I said, yeah, I'll hold off on reading it. Um, so we decided to do a co-review slash fellowship read of Flint by Louis L'Amour. Um, you know, I feel like this is one of Louis's bigger, well-known books or more known, you know. Um, I, I can see why, um, but at the same time, I can't. Um, but let, let's get into it. So I'm going to start off by giving you all the kind of the premise that we had for this co-review or fellowship read. It's a little different from how me and Jay did it um, over at Faceless Book Reviews. You know, when me and Jay did it, we just didn't want to know what each other thought of the book and we just wanted to put our reviews out there. Well, Kevin was telling me that him and Hyden Reed had like done the same thing, but they had also asked each other like five questions regarding the book and whatnot. And I thought that was awesome. So I wanted to do it that way and just give it a shot. So I'm going to start off by kind of going over the premise of Flint and then, you know, answer those questions and then kind of give you my final thoughts. So Flint by Louis L'Amour, what is it about? Well, it's about this gentleman who ends up, as this book opens up, you know, we, we are introduced to this character. Uh, mostly he goes by the name of Flint in this book. He goes by two names. Um... But we, we start off with him on this train, and we're kind of introduced to him, and he kind of monologues that, you know, he is going back west um, to just kind of be by himself and, and you know, pass away um, by himself. You know, he doesn't have any family, really. You know, he, he never really had any friends and whatnot, and he did get a, a cancer diagnosis. Um, and if you watched my, you know, weekly update, when I talked about reading this, I told you guys that kind of the premise kind of reminded me a little bit of the shootist a little bit away with John Wayne because you know in that you know John Wayne's character has cancer and whatnot, and I think that's about as close as that movie slash book gets to this one. Um, but again, you know, we're introduced to this character. Oh, what is his name? I'm sorry, but he goes by Flint. Like two names in this: Kettleman, James T. Kettleman. Sorry, guys. Um, but again, we're introduced to James Kettleman. And whatnot and you know like I said he's on this train and then he ends up getting off the train to go find the secret little hidden area uh, to kind of pass away at his own pace you know again we're you know as we're introduced to him we come to realize you know he doesn't really have any friends he does have a wife of some sorts um, and I'm not gonna give away you know that um, but we are led on to know that his wife doesn't really care for him and vice versa, um, you know, and when James gets off on this train, he ends up trying to find a place to sleep just to hold him over for the night till he can keep traveling the next day. And that's where he runs into a group of men who are trying to find some somebody and uh, uh, exchange of words ensues. And, you know, we are introduced more and more to James and about this mysterious character called Flint and how him and Flint, you know, are connected in a way. And it's a little bit of a mysterious book, you know, kind of a suspense because you don't know a whole lot about, you know, Flint, um, but we know a little bit about James and whatnot. Um, but as this book goes on, you know, F James uh, adopts the identity of Flint and goes on to, you know, try to help in a, a land war of sorts, of cattle war. 
Um, you know, this book does have, I think, like, in my opinion, I think it has, like, three or four kind of little mini subplots to it. You have the the James and his wife, you know, back east in New York area subplot. You have James, and I believe her name was, I think it's Kelly, um, who's the uh, ranch owner in the area. Then you have this Flint subplot, and then you have, you know, the subplot between, you know, Flint and the the past history of Flint and how he's affected all these other people. So you have a little bit of, you know, different genres I feel like going on in this. It's kind of a, have a romance story, you know, an action, uh, a thriller. Like there's there's quite a few different genres thrown in this book. And I did enjoy that. Um, you know, as always, this does have the Louis L'Amour tropes to be associated with this. Um, and that's as much, you know, as I'm going to get into the book in detail you know, again, um, Kittleman ends up trying to decide whether or not to help, um, you know, in this this range war, this cattle war, if you will. Um, but again, I, that's as much as I'm going to give away without trying to spoil anything. So getting into, you know, Kevin's questions. Uh, the first question that Kevin asked me was, which character did you want to kill off? And as I was, you know, Kevin sent this to me as I, I just finished the book like 30 minutes before. And Kevin sent this que these questions over to me. When I read that, you know, I was thinking which one, and I started thinking about. It, and I would probably have to go with Baldwin, who is the the main um, bad guy in this book. You know, he's the one that's starting this this range war of sorts, this cattle war. And I will say, you know, I probably would have to go with Baldwin. Um, you know. I, I think that, you know, obviously you, you can't pick anybody else except for the bad guy, um, in, in my opinion. You know, obviously there's books that, you know, have characters that you could care less about, and I'm sure in that instance you would probably choose them, but I if I had to choose anybody, I would probably choose Baldwin, in all honesty, Kevin. Um, the next question was, what was your favorite excerpt from the book? And that took a little bit of thinking, because I couldn't find it in the book, so I had to go on on the interweb, um, if you will, to try and find um, this passage. And I'm going to read the passage. I'm going to give you a little bit, you know, of my opinion on it. So my, my favorite passage from this book was, Never tackle a man who doesn't care whether he lives or not. He will always have an edge on you. If a man starts to run, there's nothing to do but keep running. And if a man must die, he could at least die proud in his manhood. Of his manhood, sorry. That's got to be my favorite passage of this book. And I'll give you some some context of why that passage happens, where that passage comes from. So you have Baldwin and this other character who are talking about Kettleman slash Flint and, and whatnot, and they're trying to find a location to try to kill him. And the, the gentleman that Baldwin's talking to says, I, I can't track him. He has no family, no friends. You know, he, he's a man that is, is going to die, and he knows it. So he has no route to go. He has no set pattern because a man who has nobody and is knowing he is going to die has and has nothing to live for will be sporadic. You don't know where he will be. He will choose in the moment what to do, and he has no obligations to conform to what he thinks he should do. He's going to do what he wants to do because he knows his life is going to end. And I think that's such a great passage, you know, and I've probably taken a little bit of it out of context when I say this, but, you know, it's like that Tim McGraw song, you know, Live Like You Were Dying, you know. he He's going to do what he wants. He's going to enjoy his last little bit of life. And I, I think we see in this book, you know, Kettleman, change go from that change of i'm just going to die to hey you know what i'm gonna die let me let me do something at least um and i don't think i'm giving anything away by saying that it is spooky season guys um but that that has to be my favorite passage from the book um next question question number three was was there a section of the story or subplot which you could have done without I think, you know, in all honesty, I, I think looking at this book in hindsight and whatnot, I don't think there's a section that I necessarily could have done without. Um, you know, I, I do think, you know, if I had to just throw one out there, 
probably would have to be the the Flint subplot of the story. And the reason is, you know, he he does elaborate a little bit on the Flint subplot, but he doesn't go into as much as I would want. So that kind of makes me feel like, man, why would you dangle that in front of me and then not really give it to me? Um, and again, that's my own opinion. I wish we had found out more about Flint and the little subplot and the, the scene that they talk about. Like, I wish there would have been a little bit more closure to that. Um, I enjoyed it, and again, I wanted it left me wanting more. But because of that, you know, we didn't really. I didn't get as much of that subplot that I wanted to. So I kind of wish he wouldn't have put that in there because now I'm like, dang, I want to know more. I want a story about that, and I don't think that there is. I'm gonna have to do some research, but I don't. I don't think there is. So if I had to pick a subplot, you know, it'd probably be that. Generally, it'd probably be you know a love interest or that or something like that. But I'd probably have to go with that. Um, Question number four was, what are your thoughts about the land ownership theme in the book? And that is a loaded question. And I will say, Kevin is setting me up with a loaded question there, guys. Um, you know, that's... It, when you read this book, it talks about how this gentleman, you know, Baldwin's coming in, trying to take land, which seems to be kind of a constant theme in any Lou of the Moore book. If you read probably like five of them, you're probably going to come across at least two that have that theme in them. And they address it in this. It's not just the fact that they're trying to push, you know, people off the land. It's the fact that the landowners realize, you know, back in the day when, you know, they came across west, you know, on the westward, west expansion. And I, I like to think I know a little bit about it. I am from uh, Oregon. So, you know, we learned all about that, the Oregon Trail and all that. You know, they didn't have necessarily land grants. All they did was they settled on a piece of land and they had to stay there and they called it their own because there wasn't anybody out there really to tell them that, hey, this isn't your land, except for the Indians. Um, and, you know, and that's when, the, you know, the, the range wars would start with the Indians and whatnot. And the fact that they, you know, addressed, hey, you know what, we don't really have any, aside from kind of living here on this land for so many years, we don't really own the land. We need to try to fix that. And I think that was a great, I, I kind of like that subplot in a way because the fact that they, you know, Louis L'Amour has the characters realize, hey, you know, we can't just say this is our land. Like we have to actually say, no, we have the deed from the land here. You know, this, I, I really enjoyed that. You know, I, I kind of wish they had explored a little bit of the land a little bit more. And the idea behind that, um, but I really did enjoy that. You know, my thoughts again. My thoughts on that was, you know, I I think that's the first time that I can recall. And again, I have not read every, you know, Louis L'Amour book. I have like a hundred plus of them up there. Um, I think that was a great thing to throw in there for the characters. Like I said, you know, to admit, hey, just because we live on here doesn't mean we know we necessarily own it. Like we have to get you know, the deed or the grant, whatever, from the government saying, hey, we own this land so nobody can push us off. And the fact that, you know, it's when the railroad was coming in and all that, and the railroad was and trying to take the land and whatnot from the homeowners, you know, that I think that's an idea that has gone on for many years that could be explored, um, you know. It kind of made me think a little bit of that show Hell on Wheels, you know, where they're building you know, the, the train tracks and all that. That's kind of what that made me think of a little bit. Again, you got a spooky season. Go to your local Spirit Halloween and uh, get get yourself a coffee mug. Or send me one. I, I'll take it. Uh, the last question. What surprised you the most about the book overall? And I'm, I'm going to jump to question number four real quick again. You know, and... I think it's Kelly is what her name is, you know, the fact that she is taking the land over, uh, you know, that her father and her uncle had ranched and whatnot, I think, and they address that, you know, character addresses it in here. Who would work for a woman? You know, a woman can't, you know, have the land and all that. I think that's that, that's a touchy subject again, but that was just the, the mindset, you know, back in the day and the fact that he kind of included that again. I really like that. But getting to question number five again, what surprised you most about the book overall? I'm going to be honest. So I had, again, not really, I generally don't do any research in my Louis L'Amour books. But I had gone on YouTube and I looked up a review of Flint. And I know that Dustin had uh, done a review over it and whatnot. And I talked, Dustin kind of briefly talked to me, you know, about this. And he said that he enjoyed the book until he got to the end because it was kind of a, as he described it, a Disney ending, which I, I didn't understand what that meant until I got to the end. 
And I will say, and this is going to lead to my final thoughts, what surprised me most about this book was the ending was not what I was hoping for. I was hoping for the standard Louis L'Amour, you know, finish to a book, and I didn't get that. Um, kind of made me think. It was kind of like a cross between Kilrone, I think is what it was. I uh, mean, I've done a review of that on here, on the channel. Kind of how the ending was a little bit, but not to the degree of satisfaction that I was hoping for. And there is a, without going too much into it, there is a twist in this book, which I didn't really enjoy as much. Um, you know, didn't make me happy or sad. I, I just think the surprise of this book the most, you know, like I said, was there was a few things. Was the ending and the fact that we didn't really explore, you know, enough about Flint in this book. We really should have. Louis L'Amour should have given me more Flint. And that is my... That's my biggest gripe with this book, guys, is, again, I wanted more of the Flint subplot that happened, and I didn't get it. You know, I enjoyed the other subplots, and I enjoyed the story. You know, on a scale of, you know, one to five, where would I rank? I'd probably give it a three. You know, that's not bad by any means. You know, it was a, it was a good book. It was an average book. Um, again, just the fact that we didn't get more of that Flint subplot and the fact that we didn't get more... Of a, and in my opinion, uh, as an exciting of an ending, I think this is probably, I, I hate to say this, probably my least favorite ending for a Louis L'Amour book. I will definitely read this again. I think I will probably reread re -read all Louis L'Amour books, you know, two, three times over. But I think this is probably my, again, probably my least favorite ending, which dropped it down a little bit. You know, with all these subplots happening, it definitely, you know... Uh, was going really good had a strong build and then that ending and the fact again that subplot just kind of took it down a little bit for me um, but again guys that is my review of flint again i want to thank kevin you know for agreeing to do this with me and whatnot and picking out flint again just because you know i didn't enjoy it as much as, and i hope kevin enjoyed it you know as much as i did i hope kevin enjoyed it more you know, when I say that, I feel like people are going to think I didn't enjoy it. It's a Louis the Moore book. I always enjoy these, no matter what. Um, you know, there's always going to be, there's got to be, you know, a book that doesn't hit home all the time. And when you write over 100 different books, it's bound to happen. Um, but I hope, Kevin, Kevin, I hope you really enjoyed this book, man. You know, it was a great pick, you know, that you did and whatnot. I'm glad that you, again, I'm glad you agreed to do this. And, I'm glad that, you know, we, we had fun. At least I did while I was reading this and whatnot. And I enjoyed our email and conversations, you know, back and forth about this um, as far as that goes. Um, but, yeah, guys, that is my review of Flint by Louis L'Amour. Um, let me know in the comments. Have you all read this? If you haven't, are you going to? You know, I again, I would always recommend read it. It's a Louis L'Amour book. I'm never going to tell you don't read a Louis L'Amour book. I don't think I will ever will, um, you know. But, again, guys, I do appreciate you stopping by. Y'all have a good one.